Peak oil is something that has been and is currently changing your life. Peak oil is a theory that goes like this. The global production of oil will hit its peak and then start to decline. Now, it doesn't mean the world will run out of oil. What it means is that the world will run out of cheap oil. The idea has been around since the mid-50s. Back then, a Shell oil geologist named Marion King Hubbard predicted that U.S. oil production could hit its peak in the early 1970s. Well, remember that oil shock back in the 70s? It's nothing compared to what supporters of the peak oil concept think we're in for once the decline starts. Economic collapse, geopolitical conflict, and the end of your lifestyle as you know. It. Factor in the rest of the planet and their growth and their needs and what you've got is increasing demand and shrinking supply of a finite resource. If you go to the internet and you search on peak oil, you're going to get 7,500,000 hits. The first website I went to to learn about this is the Wikipedia. From there, I learned about, well, what's the worst that could happen? And there's a website written about that called Life After the Oil Crash. The Energy Bulletin is probably the best. This series of books all coming, being published between the year 2003 and 2005 is telling us that something's going on that we're not being told about. The media is not telling us, the government is not telling us, people are not telling us about this. WCCO television, they had a series where they talked about peak oil, they talked about energy, they talked about renewables. There's an organization called the Relocalization Network, it has over a hundred groups in cities throughout the country that are working to plan for peak oil. Community Solution is putting together their third annual conference on peak oil. We all know the gasoline prices and oil prices are going up. Natural gas prices spiked the last winter, and they spiked in previous winters, and it's very likely in a year coming soon, the prices will just be unreasonably high. We've seen a huge change in sales in the automobile market. GM, Ford, Chrysler, they have experienced major changes in what vehicles they're able to sell and for what price, Electricity is generated, of course, mainly from coal, but getting the coal to the coal-fired power plants, like our power plants along Lake Michigan, does take other energy, including oil and petroleum resources. Heating, obviously, in the winter is getting more expensive for people. There's been an increase in unemployment, even unreported unemployment, and clearly we've seen a huge softening of the housing market. People are, people are finding that their homes are worth much less than they had anticipated, and they're having a lot more trouble selling their homes. Peak oil is tending to drive and change how much money is actually worth, and that is via inflation. Peak oil is the point at which we reach maximum global oil production, and that tiny little peak at the top, that's the peak oil point. But when people normally talk about peak oil, they're not just talking about the fact that someday we're going to get to a maximum point, or a topping point, as some people call it. They're talking about all the impacts and all the reasons that surround that. In the United States, the peak of oil production occurred in 1970. We had more and more and more oil produced out of the ground in the United States from the 30s right until the 70s. And in fact, we were doing fantastic as far as oil production in the United States. But no matter how much technology we had, no matter what we did, no matter how many drilling rigs we sent out there, oil production has declined ever since the year 1970 in the United States. The United States does not have a whole lot of oil left to produce. In fact, worldwide, the United States only has 2% of the oil reserves. And yet we use 25% of the daily world oil. The United States, back in the 40s and 50s, was the number one oil exporter. We exported more oil than any other country, including the Middle Eastern countries, and we had huge inflows of money and capital into the United States. Since the 50s, since we've had a peak of production in the United States and productions went down, we have become the number one oil importer. We import more oil into our country than any other country, and that means huge amounts of money flow out of our economy. They go from the United States to the Middle East. Once we passed peak oil in the United States, we became vulnerable to oil shocks. And there were two major oil shocks in the 70s, which drove prices, gasoline prices, way up. And they drove inflation at such a high rate that a dollar in 1970 was not near, nearly worth the same as a dollar in 1980. Some say that if we can put a man on the moon, we can do anything. But can we solve our energy problem in time? 
Nearly half of our oil is now imported. Much is wasted. We are exhausting our irreplaceable energy resources. Do we have time? Think about it. Here's a graph showing world oil production from all the way back in the 30s right up until now. You notice that we did have two oil price shocks and that decreased demand for a certain amount of time. But ever since about the year 1980, we've had increasing demand for oil and we've been producing increasing amounts of oil. And the geologists tell us this is what we're looking at in the future. If we are expecting to have more and more and more oil to do everything we want to do with it, how are we going to cope with the fact that we're entering the peak oil era and we're going to be in the declining slope of oil production? Let's imagine we could fix the price of oil at $20 per barrel. What would we demand year after year after year after year at $20 a barrel? Well, we would demand more and 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 more. But what is the reality? The reality is that we only have this much to deal with, and so we have to do something to make up that gap. And what's happening right now is the price of oil is getting bid up, and that is lowering this curve to match the actual supply curve. There are three parts of the equation. You have supply, demand, and price. And if supply and demand aren't matching, then price increases or decreases to match the supply with demand. Oil prices back about five years ago were 10 or $20 a barrel, and now they're up to $75, $78 recently. In June 2004, just one day's worth of oil consumption would represent a line of barrels long enough to encircle the earth. With almost half used for fuel and the other half used for plastics and chemicals, oil is indispensable in every single aspect of our modern everyday lives. The world population has been able to increase over the course of one century from about one and a half billion to six and a half billion only because oil has allowed for more food to be grown and distributed than ever before. World food production is so dependent upon hydrocarbon energy. All commercial fertilizers are made out of natural gas, which produces ammonia. All pesticides are made out of oil. Uh, now with agribusiness, you drive an oil-powered machine to plow, you drive an oil-powered machine to plant, then you fertilize it with natural gas, then you irrigate it with water that's pumped by electric pumps that are, that, where the electricity comes from burning natural gas or oil in most cases. Uh, then you spray it with oil pesticides, then you harvest it uh, with an oil-powered vehicle, and you the bottom line is that we eat 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy for every calorie of food consumed on the planet. We, every single one of us, are dependent on an unsustainable, failed global system providing for all of our needs, providing food, energy, shelter, all these things, and this system is failing because it is based entirely on huge quantities and ever-growing quantities of oil. The second part of this problem is that every single penny we use, every single dollar we, we earn or, or spend, that is driving this system. And it's driving it faster and faster. And so the only way really to end this system is to stop doing that. We don't know how else to live without this system. How do you live without the global economy? How do you live without oil? We don't know how to do that. We don't have a backup system. <laughs> we don't have a plan B. We're dependent on the system, this global economy, which has no future. That's a prediction of worldwide catastrophe in six years. I'd better find out what this is all about. The demand is so huge, there is nothing that we can imagine uh, to replace oil, uh, oil in, in those quantities. We need to consume much less. We need to conserve much, much more. We need to make ourselves as independent as we individually can be, and then work with community to make our communities as independent as they can be. We need to develop sustainable, compassionate, local systems that allow us to continue living and surviving on this earth while protecting it for future generations.